So some of the approaches to get a good image using the transducer is as you place the gel is to identify structures that you are familiar with. So for example, in this view here, my finger is right on the epicondyle, a bony structure. So I'll put the transducer right on the epicondyle so that I can I find, identify that, that bony landmark. The other angle to, or trick rather, to evaluate a transducer is to make the transducer as perpendicular as possible to the tissue. If you were to bevel the transducer in this fashion, in a forward-leaning fashion, or in a backward-leaning fashion, you lose any appropriate images that you would otherwise have uh, in the uh, epicondyle. So again, as you make it perpendicular, you capture all the appropriate landmarks, radial head and epicondyle there, as you can see in this view. If I were to bevel it forward, you lose the bony structures of the epicondyle. If you bevel it in the other fashion, you again just capture a lot of subcutaneous tissue and muscle. The other approach is to not to put pressure on the forward or the backward part of the transducer. If you were to do so, you would get some false images of disease, also known as an isotropy. As I'm moving it forward here, I'm getting that darker region on the left side of the screen. If I put pressure on the proximal end, I get some darker regions of the screen on the right side or on the distal part. So it's important to be well balanced and to have the transducer uh, as perpendicular as possible. Another trick for that is by placing a couple fingers. My fourth and fifth finger here are placed on the patient itself, and this is used to anchor the transducer. So any movements that I make are very controlled and methodical. So it's a very gentle, simple sweeping, either down the plane or up the plane, or again, in this case here, we're looking at the radial head and epicondyle, um, forward and backward in an anterior or posterior view.